Hello, my name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software. Hey, today let's talk about Redgate Software. More specifically, we're going to talk about SQL provision. Before we get to that, um, let me talk to you about my job. My job at Redgate Software is to be an expert in all things Redgate. I'm supposed to know all the Redgate tools inside out, forwards and backwards, and um, it's not as easy as it sounds. We have a large, very hardworking extremely smart and capable team of developers and they are constantly constantly updating the software they're doing new things all the time and um it's hard to keep up now between you and me this is my boss doesn't need to know she won't watch these videos so it's okay i have a hard time keeping up i really do and so i've spent for example i've spent the last two weeks working on SQL Monitor. Uh, I've written um, several weeks, actually. <laughs> I've written a couple of articles. I've been doing a whole bunch of updates. Um, I've got an article on um, how to identify a slow-running query and fix it, another article on uh, Azure monitoring and you know how, how and why you do Azure SQL database monitoring. All of that stuff is really cool and fun, but during these several weeks, there's been more software upgrades <laughs> from the other teams, and so I've fallen a bit behind. Now, I'm going to catch up. What I've already done here is I've installed SQL Provision, and I'm going to run through it just to see if there's things I don't know about, uh, new stuff, and try it out. And um, hopefully I can share it with you guys, and you can watch and see what I'm doing. So let's go check it out. So here you have, I've installed the latest version of SQL Provision, which includes SQL Clone and SQL Data Masker. And I've cleaned it all out. I did some cleanup and deleted some old experiments and some old testing and old demos. And so I don't have any images at all on my server currently. So let's get started. Let's take a look at create how you create an image. And that's the foundation. You have to have an image in order to make this work. So create image. Now the images can come from a backup or a server. I prefer in a production environment if possible to use a backup. So that's what we're going to do today. If you're in a non-production environment, could you connect up to SQL Server directly and create images? Absolutely. But we're going to go to a backup just because I'm, I'm just prefer it, it's from a production environment. It's just a safer way to get things done. So we need to have a server that can access it. And I've got two servers on here right now. I've got my regular instance, and I've also got the 2019 instance. I'm not sure about our 2019 support yet, so I'm going to avoid that for now. Um, I'm going to let it use um, regular access through the, my administration account. Um, you can set up SQL authentication, all over, whatever you want. And let's go and get a backup. Now, I happen to know it's C colon backslash backup backslash ADW dot BAK will get me my AdventureWorks backup. Backup is not password protected, so we can hit continue. Oops, okay, hang on one second. That's the problem with doing things live. It's every, well, at least recording what you're doing. Sometimes you get it wrong. Let's go with the, I thought I had an ADW. Oh, well, whatever. Let's go with this one. And yeah, I'm letting you see everything that I'm doing. I'm not editing this. I would probably edit parts of this, but I won't edit all of it. So, I've created, this is going to pull from a backup, and now, do I want to mask this image? Now I can install Data Masker vNext, or I can integrate with my current version of Data Masker v6. I'm going to do um, integration if I want to, but here's the deal. I have to have the masking configuration set up. All right, for this first image, we're going to skip the modifications and go straight off and create a clone. And let's go ahead and put it uh, here on my local machine and continue. So everything's set up. We've got a temporary server for dealing with things. We've got the backups. We've got the compatibility. Uh, we've got the image destination. And so now all we have to do is create an image. So, um, image name, let's just call it ADW. So now this process, the, the process of creating an image is now running, and it takes about the same amount of time, approximately, 
as a full backup of the database would take because the image itself is a page by page copy of the database similar to how a backup is a page by page copy of the database. Now this is a small database, AdventureWorks, so the amount of time it took was basically the amount of time it took for me to explain to you what was happening. So you can see that it's all done. Now once the image is created, I've got my image here ADW, I can modify it, um, and I really like what they've done with the uh, GUI. It's so much better than it used to be. Um, I can create templates for this or I can create a clone. Let's create a clone to start with. Now, do I want to modify the clone? Um, I can select a template to modify this clone, a template simply a container for one or more scripts. So my scripts can be scripts that I create through T-SQL and lots of command line driven stuff, or I can set up scripting um, templates through Data Masker. Um, again, for just for the purposes of the demo here, and just to, to walk me through how they've changed everything, I'm going to skip the modifications. Um, and we can start by typing a server name, or you can select from the drop down. And um, I'm lazy, so I'm going to select from the drop down. It's going to make sure it's got the right configuration, um, again, which you can change. And now we've got, we're going to call it uh, video demo for the clone name. And now clones create a little faster. So whereas it took, you know, maybe 90 seconds for the backup to occur, the clone is going to occur in about 20 seconds. Now the fun bit about clones are it takes about 20 seconds or so for any clone. Uh, 20 seconds for a clone on a little tiny database like AdventureWorks or 20 seconds for a clone on a 20 terabyte database. It kind of doesn't matter. The clones create quickly. Um, the only limit on clone creation time uh, is if any kind of log roll forward or roll back that has to occur as part of the image. Um, if there's any of that stuff, you may see um, some delays, but that's only because of the logs, um, not because of anything you know, that, that's going on inside the system. In fact, it's really, really fast. And so we've got, you know, our still got our ADW and, we, and there's our video demo. So it's all working. We've got everything that we need. Let's um, fire up Management Studio. Connect up to our server. And once we're connected to our server, we take a look at the list of databases. And we can see that there is a database down here, Video Demo, and that is a copy of AdventureWorks. And that is a full-blown copy of AdventureWorks. It's literally everything that we would expect to see. Let's switch back. And we can take a look at our activity. Shows us what we've done lately. That's cool. Um, we can modify the settings. I haven't looked at this in a while. There's multiple levels of permission, so you can manage who can do what within this. I know that that's been going. Um, you can set up PowerShell commandlets, how to create it, how to create the clones, all of it done up in samples, so you can put this together really easily and, and do your own stuff. Um, the licensing is there and everything else. Let's go back to the dashboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go offline, create a data masking thing. That's a different set of commands and then I'm going to show you how we can create an image and implement the data masking. Right, so what I've done is I've created a really simple data masker for masking email addresses. Uh, so this will just mask the email addresses against the person.email address table inside of AdventureWorks. Let's create an image off of this. So we go back to the dashboard, let's create an image. We're going to go ahead and use backup again. Like I said, that's the safer way to go. The server we want to use is this one. And we're going to type in our same backup before. There we go. AdventureWorks2017.back. Hit continue. And then we can drag and drop or browse. I'm just going to browse. Um, and right here, I've got a number of different masking sets for doing different things. Um, here's my email address masking set that I created already. We're going to select that and then hit continue. We have to give it, again, that UNC path and hit continue. And now we're going to create a new image. And so this one will be email 
masked will be the name of this image. Now we'll create the image. And so the process is exactly the same as you've seen before, but we've implemented the additional step of having the um, masking occur. And so you'll notice that, that the creation of the image is just a little longer because what we're doing is we are modifying the data in the image. So now when you run clones from this image, those images, um, those clones will already be masked. So let's go to email masked. Let's create a clone. We don't need to do any modifications at all because we've modified the image. So we don't need to worry about it. We'll use the same server as we used before use the same login as we used before, and the clone name in this case will be video masking and create clone. Okay, done. Same amount of time as before, but what happened? Let's go over to here. Let's change our databases. Let's go to video masking database. Let's select star from the email address and let's see what our results are. And in fact, are those results different? I don't know, let's change this quer same query against AdventureWorks, execute, and the results come back, and yes, versus everything being in AdventureWorks.com, if we run against our data masked set down here in video masking, the results are different. So the masking has worked, and we've masked the image directly at image creation. So at no point were we running these databases in places that they were accessible to people. Um, instead, it's all sealed off and walled off. And so when you start creating clones from this, instantly those clones are masked if you mask the data. Now we do have the ability, let's say, let's go back here, where are we going to email masked again? We do have the ability to create a template from here. So we can give it a name, X, Y, Z, and then upload SQL scripts and have those SQL scripts be run against our systems in an automated fashion. And once we've created a template, those, that template can be reused in multiple other things. So if you don't want to use Data Masker for part of it, or if you can't use Data Masker for part of it, you can still set up a methodology through just straight up T-SQL to clean up the data as you create the clones. So we can create the clones and mask the data, or we can create the images and mask the data. We've basically are getting to the point where we let you do what you think is best for your situation, and you can programmatically control it all. Because again, if we go back to the, to the um, settings um, and look at PowerShell, we can control it all through PowerShell. I'll have to do another video one day um, doing nothing but PowerShell creation on these scripts just, just so we have another way of getting it done. Now don't go anywhere. We've got a little bit more for you. One, please hit that like. Please hit that subscribe. If this is useful information, I need to know that. Two, SQL provision is cool. The key here is, is that what it does is, is that it does two things. Two things huge. I mean, it does a whole bunch of stuff, but, but the two things that are huge. One is that it makes it easy to very quickly and very safely create those non-production environments so that you can have them in ways that they're, they're protected from GDPR, they're protected from all the security aspects, and it's fast. So you're not using up a lot of disk space, not taking a lot of time. It's, it's quick, easy, small, quick. Yay, win. Secondly, because of the addition of the templates with the scripting, you can take your particular specialized T-SQL that you guys probably have already and that you need, uh, legitimately need, to in order to set up your non-production environments and you know change the security settings, all the things that you have to do, and incorporate that into the safe, quick mechanism of deploying different servers. Oh my God, what a win. That's why I love working for this company. My name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software.